Starting up the GT3 RS on Nürburgring. Following the GT2 RS. We are in, it's a GT3 RS. It has 200 horsepower less than the car in front of us, which is the GT2 RS, but it has a lot more downforce because that is a top speed car. This is a handling car. This is normally aspirated, that is turbocharged. This awesome car compares to the GT2 RS in a very interesting way. For one, this car has around 500 horsepower compared to the GT2 RS, which has 700 horsepower. This has more downforce than the other car. These NACA ducts, this allows them to have a flat underbody, which basically helps them suck the car to the ground. You can feel more slam to the ground than you will in a GT2 RS. This is a track car for curving around, whereas the GT2 RS is a high speed hammer. He's obviously driving calmly because he could shoot off. We have tested the GT2 RS, that thing squirts handles well, but this is much more nuanced. This car handles and it talks to you. Yes, we said the GT2 RS talks to you as well. This is different. You feel acceleration a lot more. You feel the car a lot more. Ah, uh, see, so you put the gas on there. The car is trying to control you. 9,000 RPM is fun. See, coming out of here, we're now in the wet, which makes it very squirrely. I can feel the back catch not necessarily slowing me down, at least not that much. It was particularly good here. We are on the main straight of the Nürburgring Grand Prix track. This afternoon on that corner, it was dry, wet, and dry. So we were braking hard, and then we'd feel the traction control come in because it would compensate for the change of friction. Then we would take the corner. All of that was happening, and we were not really slowing down. We got sideways a bit, but we never got so bad that we lost speed. And that's what they're saying. This car, you should keep the PSM on because it is good enough now that it does not mess with you unless you are someone like Walter Roll. Hammer it. 9,000 RPM shifts. 170, 182, 200, 210, 220. Braking. I can feel the brakes working on me. And I can feel the back getting squirrely in the wet. And it just kicked and caught. Whoa, that was slippery. Just like the GT2 RS, you set this up for the track when you get here. That will include changing the angle on the wing. And this, the GT3 RS, has more angle to be changed than the GT2 RS. Also, you do the same thing in the front, which is you go underneath and take up these two slats that help adjust airflow. Other than that, this thing is insanely track ready. So what do we know about this car? It handles really well. It's much more precise than the GT2. The GT2 is blast fast, but it does have nuance. This is even more communicative. The mess ups you're gonna do, it handles them more smoothly. It doesn't hurt you. It is an awesome new car. So, GT2 RS or GT3 RS? For one, whichever one you can buy. But this car is much more dynamic and feeling. It's a driver's car. You feel everything. It is wonderfully interactive. It is easy to drive in the sense that it's not insanely hard to do. We have on the track some of the classic GT3s including the very first one, which everybody loves. We can't bring them out on the track in the rain because they're just too dangerous. This thing is great. If you take it and you do big steering corrections, it will slow you down and save your butt. If you don't and make a slight mistake, it will correct it and you will keep on going quickly. So which one do you get? That's going to be the same question, air-cooled versus turbocharged. As much as I love the GT2 RS, right now, getting off this just now with the dirt still on it, the GT3 RS.